Okay, so why didn't it uh, display properly? Well, um, if you think about it, what should it display up here? For example, we had it display Ren, Hawk, and this. We don't have the age, for example. Or we, we might have wanted Hawk to go first and Ren to go second. So if you think about it, um, by default, there should, there's no way for, um, I guess we can say for visual vv.net, to know what to display up here. So it has a kind of default uh, method for displaying things or a dis uh, default um, way of displaying things. And um, so it has uh, the default way of displaying um, an object, like this is actually an object, uh, the, the default way of displaying an object uh, is in something called the toString method. The toString method. Where does it say? Um, the toString method. So it's a. Um, we need a, a, a to define a custom string representation of our customer type. So this is like a string rep representation, and. Um, because it doesn't know what to do, because, um, you know, the structure could have, you know, not, in our case, our structure only has, uh, I think, well, it has age, it has email, it has this and this, and I guess it has this as well, but as in some other structure could have 20 different attributes. So it just has no idea in advance uh, how to display all of this. So it just has a kind of very standard way of displaying it, which is this. So, uh, if you want it to display in a particular way, you have to do something called overwriting, overriding, sorry, it's kind of overwriting, but overriding the uh, two-string method. So, uh, the two-string method, you have to override it. And the way you do that is you declare uh, a function, uh, the two-string method, and you put the overrides um, keyword there because it, this already exists so we want to override it we want it um, we want it to perform in a different way so we have to use this signature up here at the top so public overrides function to string as string and then you have it display the way you want by uh, indicating the what it should return so return me dot name and uh, parentheses, open parentheses, and me dot email. And remember, name is a, a composite of first name and last name. And then uh, that's all. So that's how we're going to. Now you could change this. <clears throat> For example, you could also include the age up here by just uh, um, overriding this in a slightly different way. So when you do this, you get this nice display now. So he says, uh, add, the, add the code for the event handler. We need to define a custom string representation for our customer type. Uh, for instance, name and email, which is what we have here. Uh, that turns out to be very easy. We do this by overriding the toString system function for customer as shown below. So we do this, uh, add this function to customers. Remember, we have uh, customers, uh, which we did uh, in the last class. Just to remind you, you did uh, something like this in the last class. And uh, just to remind you of this, uh, structures are often defined separately from the GUI or from Form 1 in a separate class file. Uh, and this is to enhance clarity, reusability, and portability. So we defined, hopefully, um, a customer structure, and it was separate from the Form 1. So basically that means we can use it for form another Form, Form 2, Form 3, Form 4, and so on. It's not sort of just stuck on Form 1. We can use it all over the place. Um, okay. So, and we did that like this here. So, again, this is what we have. Uh, we override it. And uh, then um, 
and this I'm sorry this should be done in the uh, within the structure so this uh, you want to put this uh, add this function to to our customers structure okay and then this should work the way we want it